Hey everyone, Amin here with AI Plays. Today we're covering the anti-aliasing noise filter. Let's get started. To recap, so far we've covered how a camera converts light into a Bayer domain image, how to correct dead pixels, how to compensate for black levels, and how to adjust for lens shading. Now to properly talk about an anti-aliasing noise filter, we're going to have to look at what a filter is, how a filter is applied to an image, what noise is, and what anti-aliasing is. Let's start with a filter. A filter acts like a selective sieve for images, applying a mathematical operation to each pixel and its surrounding neighboring pixels. Filters act as a kind of pixel map, and different kinds of filters serve different purposes, like edge enhancement or noise reduction. To apply the 3x3 average filter, you would extract a 3x3 section of your image around a center pixel P0, then multiply each pixel in this section by its corresponding value in the filter. So the pixel in the first row and first column of your extracted section would be multiplied by the one in the first row and first column of your filter. You would then divide all of the values in the filter by the sum of all values in the original filter, in this case 9. Finally, you would map this new value to the central pixel P0. In doing so, the value of P0 has changed from whatever it was before to an average of all of its surrounding neighbors. Another way you could think of it is adding P1, P2, P3 all the way through P8, then dividing by 9. The same process is applied for a 5x5 averaging filter. Additionally, since filters are generally applied around the center pixel P0, filter sizes are generally odd. Now for how to actually apply filters to an image, we'll use this 5x5 bare image as an example with a 3x3 averaging filter. Say right now we are dealing with this 3x3 area, with B10 acting as P0. As before, you would multiply 1 times all 9 of the pixels in this 3x3 area, then add all the values, and divide by 9. This gives you a new value of P0, which we'll call P0 prime. Now you want to map P0 prime to the location of the original P0, but you can't just replace it. This is because when you go to the next 3x3 section, where now P0 is at G11, B10 is still one of the neighbors that's going to be averaged over. If you were to have replaced P0 with P0 prime in the previous step, the value of B0 going into this next pixel average would change, and then G11 would change, and B11 would change, and so on. Instead, when you're applying filters, we first have to create a copy of the image. P0 prime would replace B0 in the copied image, but the original image in which the filter is running is never changed. Noise is something we are all probably familiar with, and it refers to any unwanted artifacts that appear in an image. You can see a perfect example of this when you take a picture of your computer screen with your phone. This is what happened when I took one. The image is kind of distorted and you can often visibly see pixels. Noise filters work to reduce these artifacts, and there are various different kinds that are utilized in an image signal processing pipeline. The type of noise that anti-aliasing noise filters work to reduce is blocky edges. This image of a W is a perfect example. In this image you can very clearly see a kind of staircase pattern around the edges of the W. After applying some rather extreme anti-aliasing, the result is this new W with heavily smoothened edges. As for the filter, it's very similar to an average filter, except with K in the center instead of 1, and a few zeros in there as well. The zeros are there because we're dealing with a Bayer image, and we only want to interact with pixels of the same color type. As for K, it determines the intensity of the correction. Notice, if K is 1, you just end up with an average filter on your specific channel. The greater the value of K, the more weighted you give to the value of P0, and vice versa. A K value of about 8 will give some very good anti-aliasing effects without damaging image edges too heavily. Now let's move on to the code. The anti-aliasing filter function will take as inputs the LSC image we generated from lens shading correction in the previous video, and the correction factor K. It will output AAF image, a Bayer domain image with anti-aliasing filter applied to it. The filter is defined as shown earlier. We choose to divide the sum by all of the values in the filter in the beginning to speed up computation, but you can do so after calculating peanut prime as well and get the same result. Next, we extract the dimension of the image and create an empty array with the same dimensions to map the alterations to. 
finally, we pad the original image with 2x2 reflect padding again so that the pixels at the corners have a full set of neighbors to compare with. Now for the main loop. The indices are used in context of the padded image's coordinates. At each point P0, we extract a 5x5 five five section from the padded image and multiply it by the filter. The result of this will be a 5x5 five five array holding the values of P0 through P0 multiplied by their associated correction factors and zeros everywhere else. Next, we we'll use the NP0 sum to take the sum of all values in this new 5x5 five five array. A quick note, if you had chosen not to divide by the sum of all values in the filter in the beginning, you'll have to change the data type to np.u into 32 at the beginning of the code. Why? The maximum value that can be stored in np.u into 16, our current data type, is 65,535. The max value in our raw image is over 16,000. With k equals 8, the sum could very easily be greater than 16 times 16,000 which is far more than the maximum value our data type can support. Regardless, this corrected value is returned to the AAF image as peanut prime. Finally, after looping through all the pixels, you can return the AAF image. Lastly, when we run the anti-aliasing filter with k equals 8, you can see that it takes a few minutes. Unfortunately, we can't really see any major effects right now, mostly because of how large the scale of this image is. However, as we get a bit further with the pipeline, you'll be able to see the kind of image created by including or excluding different modules like this one to better evaluate their effectiveness and importance. That's it for today. Next time, we'll cover auto white balance gain control. Have a good day, everyone.